Hi, this is your host Sapna Bharti and welcome to another episode of TFR Insights. And today, once again, we have with us Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of Reckon. Rob, this has been an exciting week from so many perspectives. And we are not, we want to make a disclaimer, we are not getting into any politics or we are not taking insights. But Supreme Court, they made a decision on this long uh, legal battle between Google and Oracle where uh, they have said, you know, that uh, Google is free to use those Java APIs. It's going to have a long lasting impact on uh, software world, because if you look at today's cloud native world, any other, we kind of live in API driven world, whether you are like just, just like cars are making API calls, you know, my IoT is devices. So, and if you look at Reckon itself, so talk about when the court, the, the case was in court, what kind of concern, realistic concern were there within the software community, especially or open source community, that if APIs can be copyrighted, of course, there will be trolls there, a lot of trolls, they would like to get a lot of money, but there were serious concerns also that companies will have a totally different kind of control. So talk about the worries that you had. Yeah, this is an evolving question. And unfortunately, there are pros and cons on both sides of the issue um, because there are times when you want to have things that you're making protected and be able to say, this is my intellectual property and, and defend that. And there's times when you want to use intellectual property that you believe is common and is in, in market and released in market. Um, and you, that that should be open. And so threading the needle on this is very much a matter of perspective at times. And you know, I it's why it's taken 10 years for this case to go through the court. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, when people build something like Google built Android on top of Java, they had an expectation that the components they were using were available utilities for them to use. Um, and what ends up happening here is that based on the success of that platform, Google comes back, looks at the APIs and the, some of the source code and starts trying to claw that back and maintain a degree of control. And that's natural in the market, but if you don't know what's going to happen until after you've built it, it's very problematic and, and hard to build a business around that. Yeah, I, I fully agree with you. There are a lot of things that we do need to protect. There are a lot of things that should not have any kind of control by anybody. Uh, the very good example that I just gave was the QWERTY keyboard. You know, if somebody had copyright on those keyboard, all the way from iPhones to any device which has any would have to pay some taxes. Now, the second thing that I do want to ask and I want to go in there that is that what role do APIs play in today's world? Number one. Number two is that there are a lot of things that should, may be copyrighted, but there are a lot of things that does, doesn't make any sense. So, so talk about these two aspects. Yeah, we actually get things very convoluted here because APIs themselves, there's questions about their copyrightability and the actual API that you're invoking. There's questions about the code and the copyright of the code. Um, and then the license of that code that allows you how can control how you use the code that's embedded in that. And today's open source projects um, are actually composited over hundreds of other projects. And so, you know, one of the things we saw in the old Linux SCO wars, which might be even coming back now, is that, you know, the inclusion of a couple lines of code in your project could contaminate the whole project based on a copyright or a license or something like that. And I can tell you as you know, anybody in the technology business, a consumer or a creator, the fear of losing control of what you've built because you pulled in a library with the wrong license or because you pulled in a library where the author, and this has happened also, the author decides they don't like what you're doing with it, even though it was open, open source before, creates significant risk. And so, you know, one of the things I like about the way this court case came back is it said Google is using standard libraries in a standard way, and they had an expectation that they could do that. And so, you know, that I think is actually really useful and helpful for people building on top of open source uh, communities and code bases and things like that. And so from that perspective, I, I think that this might help resolve 
some of the anxiety of can I build on top of an open source project or can I build on, t- on top of other people's IP? Because um, otherwise it's very murky. Before we started recording, you mentioned com- complexity. And if you look at the cloud native world, if you just look at the CNCF landscape, you need a 15,000K monitor to be able to see all those logos in 1080p. But the fact is that when you do, unless and until you are uh, using a turnkey, fully managed solution, even in that case, you may have to do some mix and match. Um, uh, When you do look at all these open source code and when you look at all the complexity, and when you're talking about all those API calls, you will be sweating. So um, what was, I just want to understand, what does it mean when you do look at a very, very complicated, you know, uh, complex, uh, environment of the cloud native stack. So what impact this decision would have on that as well? You know, I think one of the things that's, that's important to think about with this is the difference between an API and copyright of an API and a service API and using the code behind the scenes. So, you know, if I'm embedding something in, in an overall stack and I'm using the code, I'm, I'm using APIs, but they're sort of embedded in my product and it's not that big of a deal. If I'm using Amazon or Google or Microsoft or any cloud provider, or at, frankly, any service, at that point, I'm using the APIs it's provided, not the code that's behind it. Um, and the place where you get into an interesting question is, could I build a service that mimics the Amazon's APIs and then sell that? Write all the code myself 100%, but replicate Amazon's APIs so that they were compatible without Amazon's permission. Um, I, I don't believe that question has been fully resolved in, in market. Um, I know it was a big uh, source of anxiety in the uh, cloud, in the eucalyptus days, about 10 years ago, when, when we were starting to try and have um, do-it-yourself competitors to Amazon. And that API is a competitive advantage uh, for those cloud providers. So if you can emulate somebody else's API without emulating their code, um, then that allows you to create portability or leverage somebody else's ecosystem that they've built. Um, that, that area is not the, decided to my knowledge in these decisions. And I think it's still a very significant question. Um, so far we've avoided it because copying somebody's API is incredibly hard to do well. If you look at uh, something as simple as a Redis, Redis caching server, where people have a lot of incentive to recreate the API because it's popular, and it's not that hard to create an authentic copy, Uh, it's unclear to what extent the the company that backs those projects can come back and say, you know, you can't emulate our API. And I think that's going to be a big component of these these markets. For example, somebody could re-implement Kubernetes without using any of the Kubernetes code. Um, Pass the tests for Kubernetes. We had some discussions about that with K3S and Minikube and things like that. And there's quite a bit of discussion. Is that the same? Is that Kubernetes or is it not Kubernetes? Um, and we don't we don't have clear answers in those cases. Right. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of murky waters. And uh, while this decision was more or less about whether you, Google can use it or not, there are still you know a lot of uh, things that are still to be. And I I, I think Supreme Court did the. I mean, I, I'm not an authority in that domain. But uh, it, it came at the right time, in the right way, so that uh, unnecessarily, um, yeah. It could create chaos for, and, and th- this is a horrible argument, because it, it gives right to people who took liberties with intellectual property to continue abusing because they were successful. So the, the absolute wrong decision here would be, well, we don't want to cause harm to all the Android users by siding with uh, Oracle, uh, right? That unfortunately would break the market in the fact that if you've written something and it's it's used without your consent or, it, or against the license, we can't reward people who were successful just for doing that work. Um, that would that would be completely unusable. And at the same time, you know, the the back in the days when Amazon was patenting the one click shopping button, and people were like, "This is just obvious utility." It doesn't make sense to um, you know, patent a for loop um, or copyright a for loop where somebody could rewrite the code and it it's, wouldn't be materially different. So it's very, very difficult to figure out the means test with these pieces. Um, and, you know, 
for the Supreme Court to actually do pretty well on a technical issue means, you know, they, they definitely got some good advice on that. Um, I don't think we're at the end of this by any means where people are going to keep embedding services on top of other services. That's the nature of, of our increasingly complex technology landscape. As you know, we were discussing earlier also, uh, I mean, with Rack and you folks are leveraging a lot of open source technologies, you know. Uh, so, and uh, we do live in this API driven world where the work is created by someone else, not us. We leverage it, we contribute back, that's how it works. Uh, how does it impact uh, people, folks like you, who are building, who are creating new technologies, new solutions? And they are kind of at the mercy of other companies who wrote some line of code. And, and I, I'm glad you're asking this because I, I think our our challenges in building software and intellectual property as a product translate into the same concerns that anybody trying to do the same ma manage it. Uh, you know, we do rely on a, you know a lot of underlying technologies on top of our product, um, like that we we build our product on top of. And we integrate, uh, you know, a core component for Rack N is that we integrate into all sorts of other capabilities and products. So, you know, we would embed a Terraform or Ansible or OEM tools for uh, provisioning and, and managing server components. And, and we don't have any desire to rewrite those components. They're, they're very good components. But it does get tricky when you start to embed um, a utility into a system of what the uh, you know how you can change it if you can modify it how you take it in whole who who is actually the licensed user in those cases and what the permissions are and you know i think that you know i look at the supreme court here and think okay i can use other people's software products as a as a unit in a consistent way and and be in the clear that's a relief uh, i think that you know, we can still get into trouble if you look at calling something yours that's not yours um, and making the pretense that, you know, it's, oh, this is all mine. I'm just, I'm just going to, you know, ignore all the components that I've built behind the scenes. And, and probably the most important thing that we do is we actually claim when we use other people's components. Um, we track all those things and we, we are very aware of the components that we bring in to our system. Um, in part because that's part of the, our value proposition, but in part because you have to know the providence of everything you have. And, and this decision does not reduce that requirement in any way. I think there's a very thin line between what the Supreme Court has given us a sigh of relief over and what would cross that line and isn't going to be protected uh, from that perspective. APIs and how you use APIs is a big one. But products and software and code and libraries are still uh, potentially fraught with peril if you're using them without understanding the licenses behind them. Uh, Rob, yes, this was a really good discussion, especially it was less about uh, that issue has finally been solved for Google. It was for the whole software industry because that was really serious because as we talked, we live in this API-driven world, so so thanks for sharing those insight and being you know a builder yourself. Uh, the, I could not find anyone better to discuss this, so thanks for your time and insights today, and I look forward to talk to you again soon. Thank you. Swap, it's always a pleasure. Thanks.